Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Everyone knows that our cell phones go with us everywhere, and they also pretty much track us everywhere. And that information, of course, is one of those things that people often wonder about. Who gets that information and what do they do with it? And uh, it's coming to light that it's much more intrusive than most people think. And we've discussed this before on some levels, whether our phones are listening to us, for instance. But now, Google employees admit in a lawsuit that the company made it nearly impossible for users to keep their location private. And BusinessInsider.com ran the story written by Tyler Sonnemaker. And there's a quote in the headline, Apple is eating our lunch. (laughs) It's the competition between Google and Apple over the data gathered by users of smartphones. Newly unredacted documents in a lawsuit against Google revealed the company's own executives and engineers knew just how difficult the company had made it for smartphone users to keep their location data private. And this has happened to all of us, I bet, where you're working on your phone or your computer and you're trying to figure out how to shut something off. You learn that your device is doing something that you don't want it to do and you're trying to shut it off. And what's fun is Google the phrase. Ironically, you Google the phrase. How do I shut the such and such off? And you'll, it'll autofill because so many people are looking for that information. Google continued collecting location data even when users turned off the various location sharing settings made popular privacy settings harder to find and even pressured the phone company LG and other phone makers into hiding settings precisely because users liked using them, that is shutting them off, according to documents. So in an attempt to get people to stop shutting these things off, they said, let's hide the controls and make it harder to shut off. The former vice president overseeing Google Maps, Jack Menzel, admitted during a deposition that the only way Google wouldn't be able to figure out your home address and work locations is if you intentionally threw Google off the trail by setting your home and work addresses as some other random location. So if you have never gone in and set your home location, they still know where it is. They can figure that out. And he said that pretty much if you went in and set a fake one, that might throw them off the trail. But otherwise, they know. A uh, Google senior product manager in charge of location services didn't know how the company's complex web of privacy settings interacted with each other, according to documents. Meanwhile, Google and LG did not respond to requests for comments on this story. The documents are part of a lawsuit brought against Google by the Arizona Attorney General's office last year, which accused the company of illegally collecting location data from smartphone users even after they had opted out. So in other words, your phone says, you know, would you like us to stop collecting the data? You opt out. You say, yes, stop doing that. And it kept doing it, at least according to the allegation. A judge ordered new sections of the documents to be unredacted last week in response to a request by trade groups, Digital Content Next and News Media Alliance, which argued that it was in the public's interest to know and that Google was using its legal resources to suppress scrutiny of its data collection practices. The unsealed versions of the documents paint an even more detailed picture of how Google obscured its data collection techniques, confusing not just its users, but also its own employees. Google uses a variety of avenues to collect user location data, according to documents, including Wi-Fi and third-party apps not affiliated with Google, forcing users to share their data in order to use those apps, or in some cases, even connect their phones to Wi-Fi. So there is no way to give a third-party app your location and not Google, one employee said, according to documents, adding, this doesn't sound like something we would want on the front page of the New York Times. When Google tested versions of its Android operating system that made privacy settings easier to find, users took advantage of that, which Google viewed as a problem. So they said, look, we can make it so people can turn this stuff off. Oh, wait, people are turning it off. That's not good. (laughs) To solve the problem of people turning the stuff off, Google then buried those settings deeper within the settings menu. So when you find out how hard it is to locate these switches, there's a reason for that. And and this is one of those things that frustrates most smartphone users is they're trying to figure out how to shut something off. And it's been done that way on purpose. Google also tried to convince smartphone makers to hide location settings through active misrepresentations and or concealment, suppression, or omission of facts. Uh, That is data Google had showing 
that users were using those settings in order to assuage manufacturers' privacy concerns. Google employees appeared to recognize that users were frustrated by the company's aggressive data collection practices, potentially hurting its business. Um, One employee said, fail number two, I should be able to get my location on my phone without sharing that information with Google. Um, And then someone else wrote, this may be how Apple is eating our lunch, saying Apple was more likely to let users take advantage of location-based apps and services on their phones without sharing the data with Apple. So it's it's crazy, but, you know, the phones do a lot of cool things. And the idea that you can turn your phone on and pull up a map and have it show you where you are is very, very cool. And, I mean, I remember when the handheld GPS units first came out and were commercially available and getting one and going, this thing is cool. And the idea that they just throw that in for free on your phone is cool. Until you realize that they're using it to track you. <laughs> you are the product, okay? Not the phone. You're the product. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's a, you know, two sides to all of these things. But it's always bugged me when there's stuff that you can't shut off. And I'm going to mention one recently that, that recently came up in my case. And it's the uh, thing on uh, Windows. I think it's called OneDrive. And it is a, a system that they use with Windows where they give you free cloud storage and you can store some of your stuff on the cloud. But when it first came out, you couldn't opt out of it. It was just automatic. So I have a couple computers and the most recent computer I bought as I was setting it up, it actually said, now let's set up your OneDrive cloud computer storage. And I thought to myself, well, I don't want to put stuff in the cloud because among other things, I'm an attorney. I have legal documents that are confidential between me and my client, and I can't just go and let other people handle them. So I said, no, I don't want to set this up, and I skipped that step. Every single time I turn that computer on, it says, you're not completely set up. We need to set up your OneDrive. We we need to set up your OneDrive. And I would skip that step every single time. Then the strangest thing happened last week. I was at a different computer, turned it on, and a thing popped up and it goes, thank you for finally finishing your registration for OneDrive. Your OneDrive thing is now set up on this computer and will now continue. I never set it up on that computer. How'd that happen? So I go, oh, how do I shut this off? How do you shut off OneDrive? (laughs) Type half that sentence into Google and watch what happens. Turns out it's a very popular question. How do you shut off OneDrive? And a bunch of people were commenting in the various threads discussing this, saying things like, why wouldn't you want the free storage? Take the free storage. Um, You know something? I actually have backups I use. I actually have hard drives, you know, that plug into my computer and I back the hard drive up. And so if my computer crashes, I've got a hard drive with everything on it. What, what, What? Can't I do that? Do I have to use OneDrive? And the weird thing is, it turns out that later on, more recently, they actually have made it to where you can apparently opt out computer by computer from OneDrive. But trying to shut down your OneDrive account that you never asked for in the first place, good luck with that. It ain't going to happen. So I'm not here to complain about that. I'm simply pointing out that the computer companies, the phone companies, the tangentially related companies (laughs) out there, often do these things where they say, look, we're going to give you this thing. Use it. And you say, I don't want to use it. doesn't matter. You you kind of have to use it. Or we're going to keep harassing you saying, you need to continue setting this up. Set this up. Set this up. Or whatever. So here, they're tracking your location, and they're going to use that to sell it to advertisers. Uh, And again, like I said, you are the product. Phone's not the product. Program's not the product. You are the product. And so they're going to sell that information, and so they don't want you to be able to turn it off. Now, legally, they have to let you turn it off somehow, but they just make it extremely difficult, (laughs) extremely difficult to the point where most people don't turn it off. And then they have enough information they can sell, and they make money that way. So crazy story, but we'll have to watch it unfold because there is litigation apparently in Arizona brought by the AG there against Google. And of course, if there's a good ruling there, then it might spread 
So we'll see. But um, Apple is eating our lunch. Businessinsider.com ran the story written by Tyler Sonnemaker. Google employees admit in lawsuit that the company made it nearly impossible for users to keep their location private. And comically, many of the people who worked at Google also didn't even know how to figure this stuff out. Darren, thanks for sending it. Questions or comments, put them below. Those will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. A child lives in the present, a young person in the future, the elderly enjoy living in the past.